Though the arm of the Lord your God is not shortened, but I say unto you, will you become my hand extended, that I may reach out and touch, yea, that I may touch those that do not know me, that I may touch those to whom are close unto you, your loved ones, your friends, your family. I want to touch them all, says the Lord your God. I want to cause revival within the midst of your home. And if as I begin revival in the midst of your home, firstly I begin with revival with you. As King David called unto me of old and said, Revive me, O Lord, and I shall be revived. I say unto you, will you call unto me today? That I may revive you and you shall be my hand extended. And you shall use the new authority that I will release unto you. For in revival comes the authority of the Lord your God. And I extend that. I extend my hand. Will you be my hand that I am extending this day? Will you take up the delegated authority that I have given unto you? Do not withdraw from the authority that is rightfully yours, but use it. But use it wisely in me, says the Lord your God. I have said in times past, and I speak it again this morning, no good thing will I withhold for those who love me. Love me, says the Lord, love me. Love me, pour your heart out to me and let there be a liquid love flowing through your being, says the Lord your God, of the evidence of my presence. I am the Lord your God. Father, I thank you, Lord, the way you speak to your people, to your church, the way you embrace us, the way you challenge us. The encouragement you give to each one of us, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the honour, the privilege to be here today. To stand in your presence and to love you. And to know what a loving God we serve. Holy Spirit, you have your way today in this meeting. Though we may say to the men of the church, Happy Father's Day but it all comes back to Lord, your Father's Day. May you be the Father of all fathers, rejoicing this day, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've seen Jesus, if you know Jesus, if you understand Jesus, you understand the Father. I hear so many people say, I love Jesus, but don't talk to me about God, the Father. And that's because they don't understand that Jesus is a picture of God the Father. What is the Father like? Well, according to the scripture, and we have to go according to the scripture, not what <laughs> pastors would say, or what preachers would say, or what anyone else would say. We have to go according to the scripture. The scripture says, that the Father loves, He commands, He instructs, He guides and He warns, He trains. A Father rebukes and restrains, a Father punishes even and chastens. A Father nourishes, supplies all needs and doesn't provoke. They're all the duties that are inbuilt in a real father. Now some of you may not have had a real father. Some of you may not have had a father that demonstrated those qualities. But if you know Jesus, then the Bible clearly says that we know the father. <clears throat> when my boys were growing up, they didn't have a father. Their father left them when my youngest was only a few weeks old <clears throat> and so one of my constant prayers was that God would be a father I used to often say I can't train these children without you Lord <laughs> they need a father <clears throat> and I was pretty tough on the boys 
some said a little bit too tough. But I recall one day when my eldest Robert got out of hand and oh, he was mouthing off as usual <laughs> and I went to give him a good clip over the ears, you know what I mean. <laughs> and I went, Robert? And he went, yeah. What are you going to do now? And I thought, well, I can't clip him over the ear. <laughs> so I said, your father will rebuke you. And he laughed, thinking he'd got away with it, shot out the door, jumped over the back fence. There was a vacant allotment behind our house in those days. Next thing, he comes limping in blood pouring out of his foot. He jumps straight onto a broken bottle. I said, what happened to you? You know what he said? My father rebuked me. <laughs> I'm so glad that there was a father at every turn for those boys and he rebuked them. He pulled Richard up in New Zealand, far away from me. <laughs> His father rebuked him. You might think, oh, well, that was pretty tough of God. Yeah, it was. And I'm so grateful because they all serve the Lord today. Praise God. If you have children that aren't following God, ask their father to take them in hand. <laughs> and stand out of the way because sometimes God does. Don't interfere. Let them go into God's hand. The safest place for any child is in the hand of God. <laughs> Can we stand, please? Remembering on this Father's Day that above all our Father loves us and because he loves us, he will take us in hand and do all those things that he said he would do. I don't know whether you've been chastened by the Lord or even punished by the Lord, but I know I have. <laughs> and it's great when you're restrained by the Lord. It's good when God tells you what to do. God the Father tells you what to do. It's wonderful to know that he supplies all your needs. And the greatest need that we have is to be connected to God the Father. And that's why Jesus left us these emblems. Because by our own devices, we wouldn't get anywhere near God, would we? No matter how religiously we tried. <laughs> but we hold in our hands representative of the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, these emblems that bring us nigh unto the Father. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, that you willingly died for us. You shed your blood that we might be washed clean from our sin. Your broken body brought us healing and restoration. So, Father, as we take these emblems, help us to be truly grateful to remember that you have our highest and our best interests at heart. To seek your face, Lord, and to yield to your ways in all that we think say and do and above all all that we desire thank you father for jesus thank you jesus for dying amen let us eat and drink together